I was going to do this thing uh, called Seeking the Saku, but uh, I, I, I just did a, a, a random sampling of my friends uh, on, uh, on the uh, BLM, the Black Knowledge Matter, the, the BKM, the Black Knowledge Matters uh, group. And they said, M.O., you better get in there and talk about Kamala Harris. So uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about Kamala Harris. And uh, if you don't like it, it's, you know, um, what could I do? You, you know, you can't please everybody. You know, this this is what I'm saying. But, but you know, really, sometimes I, I, I hesitate to... I hesitate to mention her name because I'm 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 afraid of the the reaction. I'm I, I'm I'm taken aback by by the reaction. But let's let's just get into it. All right, we it's have Minister Bill, system. Brother Jer Brother Jerry here, Sebastian. I almost sent you something today. It was about tree lovers. It's a it's a word. It's a word. There's a, there's a there's a word. I almost sent that to you. Bring it, Tony. I'm, Bring it. I'm glad that you joined us today, <laughs> Celeste. Glad to see you, Sugar D, Zarita, Mama Rose, and Gina, Willie. All right. All of you African. All right. I ain't no African. Okay. Those were things that people used to say that uh, would get me agitated. <laughs> but I, I'm i uh, I'm bigger than that now, uh, Sebastian, so I don't have to, to get upset. All right. So, um... Kamala Harris, you know, uh, just just to start out with her name, you know, uh, and they want to and they want to mispronounce her name. It, it's not like it's Al Cabalon or, or or something like that. You, you know, it's, it, it's a very simple name, Kamala. It's a Sanskrit word. It means lotus. It's used as a feminine. Uh, given name in Indian culture, predominantly in Hindu families. It's one of the, the names of the goddess Lakshmi, uh, who appears at the center of a lotus. Kamala is, com is common in India, is associated with several deities, and is a symbol of wisdom. Only one of many Sanskrit words for radiant, fragrant, large petal pink lotus. The general meaning of lotus, of the lotus flower is purity and strength. All right. And um, I'm going to pause here because somebody put something in the chat and I'm going to, they, they might have sent it to me personally and they didn't want, um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, somebody sent me something personal in the chat and uh, it it's not for general consumption. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to move on. All right. So, um, any 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 questions on that? I know it's only the first slide. Any any comment? That's that's great right there. Her, her with the meaning of her name, you know. And um, purity, because the lotus, and, and you know, the lotus is represented in comedic. Uh, along the Nile uh, imagery because the lotus emerges from the water without mud, muck, or debris. It's often seen as the ultimate symbol of purity. It comes up out of the muck and mire, and it can also stand for retaining purity of spirit through uh, life's challenges. It, it, it means rebirth. The lotus a flower symbolizes rebirth due to its blooming pattern of opening with the rising of the sun and, and closing as night falls, persistence, overcoming adversity and life's challenges are connotations of the lotus flower because they're most commonly found in swampy, difficult terrain and emerge from the dark, muddy water looking pristine and beautiful. Just that symbolism, sisters and brothers. But now when I mention Kamala Harris among some of our people, or, or I see different reactions of our people, why do we always 
uh, revert to like crabs in a barrel. You know, when, when fighting for our people, sometimes our toughest opponents and most staunchest saboteurs are our own people. Well, the problem I have is that you don't have to like her. And most of our elections are choosing the lesser of two evils. And I do not understand why you wouldn't be voting for Kamala simply because you cannot, should not, ought not vote for Trump. Yeah, I, I, I agree, Celeste. I, I, I agree. Anyone, anyone else? Just weigh in. Uh, we're yeah, we're, we're going to I mean, you got two options, right? I just got my ballot, and I see there's uh, several people that they have for president and vice president, different people I've never heard of. So, you know, uh -huh. since I know nothing of them, you know, I only have two choices, Trump or Kamala. Yeah. It's not rocket science. <laughs> oh. well, hold, up, hold, hold up. Some, some, some have uh, said there are three choices. Okay. And that is to not vote at all. See? Which is, a, that's, that's which a is vote like for voting for, for Trump. That's yeah, a, that's, that's a, a yeah. scary that's one. Vote for Trump. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we're saying we can vote for the 34-time felon, or we can vote for the state district attorney, or we can let others decide our fate. Well, well, now, Bill, go, Zarita. go ahead, Zarita. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, I agree with what's been said, the lesser of two evils. Uh, good evening, everyone. I didn't speak. Sorry. Good evening. Um, I'm totally against her view. Um, and I heard her voice uh, regarding Israel, Northeast Africa. And they were talking about the... I think it was yesterday that it was the anniversary when Hamas bombed Israel. And she is very pro Netanyahu, and I most definitely am not. Uh, strongly disagree with her on that. And so then my question becomes, what else? What about Congo? What about Sudan? What is her position going to be? You don't talk about those things, though. No. I yeah, hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying, Sister Sarita. And I thought about that thing about the stuff that's just out there blatantly. They're killing up people. They're destroying a whole, you know, genocide of people, you know, Palestinians and stuff like that. And we see that. And I'm wondering, what is it that Israel have over the United States of America? Because they are standing with them knowing what we're seeing, and, and, and all that's politics too. I, I hear what you're saying as far as, you know, Kamala's not saying that, and and and, and trust me, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm with the lesser of two evils too, I'm a full Kamala, but uh, I'm not, I'm Kamala, 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 that, like that. But, uh, but I'm thinking the position, I think that there's something else more to it than what we know. As, as the citizens of the United States, as to why they're sticking to that, it, it, it has to be something political in the background. Because anywhere political. in the world that we can just sit, you know, that, that those two, even Kamala, is, and some of the other <laughs> things she says, it just don't fit that she would go for him like that. I think there's a, she has to. I think it's something political behind that. That's, that's my own political. personal feeling. I just want to say some, sometimes, Sometimes crabs in a barrel is a good thing because it forces some of us to look at issues which from another point of view. And I say that because a conversation I had three years ago with my brother-in-law in Denver who asked me, who is this Kamala Harris as vice president? And, and we went into a good discussion about it. And now that she is our candidate, I talked to him recently and he said, Jerry, I really appreciate you enlighten me about her background. So 
the crabs in the barrel is not a negative in my opinion. It forces us to analyze some of our own personal positions as well as general positions that the candidate has taken. Uh, I have no problem with the criticisms of Kamala based on uh, lack of international experience or lack of uh, uh, having to make critical decisions, but it just enhances my ability to defend her as an intelligent person who is analytical and has the type of background to deal with complicated issues. And you know, the other part is, excuse me for not being online, is that they always know more than they're telling us. We will never get the full story like they have it, never. And, and, and that's probably a good thing because sometimes too much information in the wrong hands is dangerous. You know, they used to say, when the revolution comes, you, there's certain people you can't tell because they will fold. So I always remember that. There are certain people you can't give the information to because they won't be able to hold it and contain it. And I don't agree with everything she said. Look at Biden. He said things about us as a race and we voted him in. So none of them are totally for us. And we have to understand that. But we do have to keep Agent Orange from getting back in control. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for, for sharing. Um, you know, Jerry, I just want to, I, and I agree with your point of view. But, um, when I did my program with Philippe, one of the things that he said was that um, he said that in, in, in their normal habitat, crabs form like a like a like a, a, a hill of, of, of crabs and the one on top eats and then he goes to the bottom and lifts the other ones up and then the next one eats and and, and mm -hmm. so on and uh, but when they're out of their environment like in a bucket they eat each other you know so I, I never I never knew that that uh, uh, part of it. Uh, having done some crab digging in Oregon and Washington, uh -huh. and watching them in their natural environment, mm -hmm. I never was of the opinion that, that they were eating or attacking or reducing each other. They were just working towards survival. And therefore, that should enhance all of us to work towards a greater level of survival in terms of being able to ask the critical questions and force issues that rise to the top. Even though we may disagree with her on some things, we are yes. asking critical questions and that's the important piece. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you, Jerry, for that wise um, addition. I'm gonna keep on uh, going. So now the first question that we get, um, you know that 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 we're uh, asked to deal with is is she black? Is she black? And uh, this first picture is um, on, on the left is her mother and father. Her her father is um, is a Jamaican, and an Af an Afro Caribbean His mother. Her mother is an East Indian, and these are some early pictures of her mother. And I, I, I didn't get a picture of this, but Doris had a friend named Jackie, and her mother, Mrs. Lee, um, she was from Louisiana, and she looked a lot like, um, like Kamala Harris's mother. You know, um, anyway, we have to go through all of these things. Or is she black? All right. Now, normally, if you have one one eighth of the billionth gotten into the series five into the calculus, if you got one drop of black blood, 
you're an N-word. You know, but for some reason, and, and here is Kamala's grandmother, her paternal grandmother. Now, if you'd see this woman come into Wose, you'd welcome her. Because you would recognize her as an African. And here, this picture over here looks like her getting together with her family in Jamaica. And these are some of her mother's people here at the bottom. So Indian mother, South Asian, Jamaican father, African descent, Kamala, South Asian, and black. Go ahead, Sebastian, go ahead. Janet Jackson said she was told that her father was. Yeah, Janet. Uh... I'm sorry she said that, that was, that was ignorant. <laughs> now, uh, this is, um, see this picture here, uh, alumni of Howard and uh, Hastings Law School. This is a picture of Kamala Harris when she graduated from Hastings Law School. Next to her is her mother, and next to her is my aunt Sheila Wilson. Aunt Sheila was her first grade teacher. She was a person that uh, kept up with her throughout her life. As a matter of fact, I talked to her son, Aunt Sheila's son, recently. And um, he said, well, you know, when you guys would come over during the, during the Christmas holidays, he said Kamala would be over there. I said, really? He said, yeah, but you know, she was a little kid. She was like in the first and second grade. You know, so just the fact for me personally that that Kamala, and she always talks about Aunt Sheila, th that she put Aunt Sheila. Now, Aunt Sheila isn't a blood relative, but her and my mother were close. She went to the church across the street from my house. We, we, we saw her all the time. We always went over her house during, during the Christmas holidays. And when Aunt Sheila was up here in Sacramento, she was from the Bay Area. And when Aunt Sheila was, was uh, here in Sacramento, she was in the hospital and she was a little uh, delusional. And when I went in to see her, she recognized me. And I felt very special because... Uh, she wasn't recognizing anybody but me. So the fact that Kamala put Aunt Sheila in her picture, invited her at her Hastings Law School graduation, still refers to her, causes me to want to vote for her. That's, that, and nobody knows that, you know, but, but me and a few other people. Me and my sister. I just talked to my sister. My sister wrote an article. She's, she's working with a union and she wrote an article and she put this picture in her article referring to Aunt Sheila. Is she black? She went to Howard University, pledged and did all those things. You know, so that's that's ridiculous. This is Kamala Harris's, this is the village that Kamala Harris's mother came from in Tamunado. Look at these people. These people are darker than most of the people on this screen. <laughs> and they're very proud of her. Look, you know, they, they got this big picture. Of her village is very proud of her. She's She's running in America, running for the presidency of the United States. These people who are darker than blue in Tamunado are, are some of Kamala Harris's relatives and come from her village, her, mo her mom's village. So on uh, Teacher Appreciation Day, um, 
She says, I'm thinking of my first grade teacher, Mrs. Wilson, whose commitment to her students always inspired me. She cheered me on for decades from the classroom to my law school graduation. I am so grateful for her and all our nation's teachers. You know what I think? This is this is a this is a conspiracy theory that I that I think I think that Biden tricked Trump. I think that Biden, you know, because Trump is so smart. So Biden sets up the the debate. He sets up he sets up how the debate is going to be, you know, making sure that Trump can't can't butt in in the response. And then he goes to the debate and he acts like he forget who he is. And then the next day, he's at a rally. He's the, he's the same, he's the same old Joe Biden. He's rallying the people. And then uh, a, a week later, he's at a uh, he, he's at a uh, a correspondence press conference, 200 press people, and they're asking him questions about foreign affairs. He's, he's answering them lucidly, energetically, no notes. I think, and then they turn around and say, you know, he waits at, at, at the last minute and says, you know what, I'm dropping out and I'm, and I'm, uh, and I'm supporting, uh, I fully support and endorse Kamala Harris this year. And then they went into, they went into a whole, whole thing. Now, people say that Kamala is a cop. Why, why Kamala is a cop is a huge lie. Between 2004 and 2010, when Kamala Harris was San Francisco's DA, there were 1,956 marijuana convictions. Only 55 ever served jail time. Why? In 2005, Kamala created a program called Back on Track, allowing low-level nonviolent drug offenders to enroll in a school instead of doing jail time. After graduation, their records were wiped clean, preventing barriers to future employment. The program reduced recidivism from 53% to less than 10%. You know, we don't talk about this. You know, because she was told as a prosecutor and as a DA, you're just supposed to put people in jail. But she did that, you know. And then they then they make claim, claims are made she doesn't have enough experience. I saw this on uh, Ari Melberg's The Beat. He says all government experience as uh, president of the United States nominees. This is what this is what John F. Kennedy had. This is what Reagan had. This is what uh, uh, Barack Obama had. Look. Look at what Kamala has, 34 years. But they say she don't have enough experience. Let me stop somebody, put something in the chat. Let's, uh, let's, let's uh, get to that. Let's see. Okay. Is she black? Is she American? Did anyone in her family get to buy or receive land directly from the government? <laughs> That's a good one. And then uh, the question is a relevant, is a relevant or whether... Agent Orange is German or Scottish. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, let me get back to this. Thanks. Thanks for putting that in. Um, so, the, so they try to say that she don't have she don't have enough experience. She's got thirty four years of experience. Jack Kennedy didn't have twenty years. Reagan was in. He was the governor of California for eight years. And, and 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 Barack Obama was a senator for like eight years, but she has 
34 years of experience. And, and, and then this man who looks like the devil claims are made that she doesn't have enough experience. The government experience in the first run ticket. She had 31 experiences, 31 years of experience in 2020. And this man that looks like the devil has 20, uh, has six years of experience. Government experience as uh, president of United States nominee. So Jack Kennedy, 13 years in the House and Senate. Reagan, eight years. Barack Obama, state Senate and in, this, in the United States Senate, 11 years. Trump had zero experience. Kamala had 21 years of experience. She's got four-star general endorsement. This brother here endorsing VP Harris is necessary. Trump has demonstrated that he is wholly and dangerously unfit for commander-in-chief. He praises and em emboldens our enemies. And, and, and you all are, are familiar with what just came out. Let me, let me stop here. You got, are you guys up on what just came out? Yes, the, uh, yes. the My. contact he's had with the uh, Putin since he left the presidency, yeah, either in terms of phone birds. calls, and of course, what he whatever gift or something he gave to Putin during his administration. He gave him the uh, well, COVID, the co test, the COVID, COVID test. COVID but, test. Yeah, 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 and we were a shortage, and I, I think uh, Kamala Harris is really, t you know, honing in on that too. That he would oh, give, yeah. you know, him those tests, and we didn't have them. Well, this man, this general, this, 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 let's see, how many stars does he have? This four star general, he says he praises and emboldens our, you know, he said this back a while. You know, this, this isn't like him saying it this week. He's, he praises and emboldens our enemies that seek to weaken our country. He has denigrated our brave men and women in uniform. Any service member, if any service member were to ever act just a bit like Trump, he or she would be immediately removed from the leadership position, admonished and separated from military service. And then there was the uh, Democratic Convention. And I've never seen a Democratic. I, I've been watching. I've been watching seriously Democratic conventions since 1972 when McGovern was run. That's how. That's how long I've been. I've been watching them, checking out because my because my family is. Uh, you know, they keep up. They would keep up on 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 issues, and, and keep up on on politics as as was uh, said it stated earlier. But I've never seen a convention like this. This, I mean, that convention was rocking. And this is why, sisters and brothers, that I want Trump to go down. I wouldn't be sad if he choked on a chicken bone tonight. <laughs> the, the Central Park Five. These brothers were accused of raping a white woman in Central Park. Trump took out, I've, I've heard different things, $200,000 or $80,000 ad in, in the New York Times, asking that they, demanding that they get the death penalty. And then it, when it was proven that they didn't do it through DNA and the person who did it admitting Trump still wouldn't. He, would, he wouldn't apologize. He, would, he wouldn't say anything. So this, for me, and I can only speak for myself, this is why I want Trump to go to jail. 
Because those brothers went in, and I think some of them was in 10 to 12 years. Not jail, prison. Yeah, I never saw, I never saw a convention like that. Stevie Wonder was there. Um, what's this brother with Sheila E? John Legend. You know, I went to school with Sheila E. Went to I went to junior high school with Sheila E. You had all these people, and then they talked about Project Twenty Twenty Five, and we did we did something on Black Knowledge Matters. You can go back and look at it. You should check it out. I know it's nine hundred pages, but if you just read the first. 51 pages. It's, it should scare you enough to vote. Now, outside of the convention, people were protesting. Palestinian protests outside. Let me, um, let me end this here. And put this up. I talked about this Sunday in my message. This is this is why the Palestinians are dying, I believe. Palestine's five hundred billion reason, five hundred billion dollar reason to be subjugated. Studies have found this. Territory contains 122 trillion cubic feet of natural gas and 1.7 billion barrels of oil, all of this worth around $524 billion, both off the coast and beneath the occupied lands of Palestine, over 3 billion barrels of oil are estimated to exist according to a 2019 UN report. These numbers don't even include the gas potential in Palestine. The Levant Basin, which sits in the Mediterranean, is, is estimated to have some 1.7 billion barrels of oil, while over 1.5 billion are estimated underneath the occupied West Bank area. This is why, this is why Palestine, that's just like, that's just like in Africa. You know, we have so much, there's so much there in those places. And, 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 and people that want to be so religious forget, thou shall not steal. That's it. That's in all three of the major Western religion. Thou shall not kill. That, that's in all three of the major Western religion. Go ahead, John. Go ahead. Take yourself off mute. Yeah. The amazing thing for me that just boggles my mind. We, 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 need to, we need to hear you a little bit better, John. To, uh, uh, yeah, no. Uh, did I take it off me? Yeah. Can you hear me now? A little bit better. Not 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 like we were. I don't know what happened. But go ahead. Go ahead, Will. We'll... The thing to me is that when you consider the history of America, the history of Europeans from the time they left, that's all they've ever done is go somewhere and take what would belong to somebody else. Just forever. Yes. In Africa, they did in Australia, they did it here in America, they do it just everywhere. That's what they do. I like the way I heard Paul Robinson say one time, and, and he was talking to his wife, and he said, Yes, yeah, that's, that's what the people do. You see something, you like it, and you take it. You know, and that's what it And that's what this whole thing about the, the gas, you got to know, it's just all about them acquiring somebody else's resource, and they're covering it up with some other, you know, reason that they're there. The bottom line, you won't be. Yes. 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 So 
I, I'm, I'm with you all that said, th thank you, John. I'm with you all that said, I'm hoping that, you, you know what, you know how the game is played. She can't come in and say, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to stop giving uh, arms to, to Netanyahu and, and, and I'm going to go to the UN and, and vote. She can't say that. She got to, you know, all right. Got to play that game. Seriously. It's a you got to play that game. You got to play that game. And I'm telling you, you guys, it's all about the money. It's all about the money. I know that they, they do. They take everything. They claim everything. But it's about that money. And I think that they believe, you know, that money is power. Yeah. Money, 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 yeah. Money. Yeah. And and yes. when you when when you say money, I interpret that to be put yourself in the position to command and control the economic resources which the pastor just mentioned, which are the oil, etc., uh in that territory. So it's all about who is going to be in the best position to control those uh minerals yes. and yes. if the country which we are subjugated to the United States continues to utilize Israel as the vehicle to do that, then I think that's the direction it's going. Yeah, that, that that's right. I, I mean, you know, you know there's a strong lobby. The Israelis have a strong lobby. Uh -huh. It's been like that. It's been like that for ever since the state of Israel was formed. You know, so everybody, uh, you know, I'm I'm hoping that she changes the the direction. But then, what do you think will happen to her when she does that? They've they've assassinated presidents before. Yeah. You know, so that's that. Those those are just those are just reality. Including that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you know. Uh, now I don't believe this. This is something else too. I don't believe those, that those att attempts on Trumps was real. I, 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 I really don't. I think we're gonna Me find either. out. Me either. You Mike either. Talk. Lindell, Mike Lindell found a just a good way to advertise his pillow on Trump's ear. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and, and people are so, I don't know. Um, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a lead minister here at Will Say. And we have we and Minister Mazalee's please do not ever do crazy stuff like, okay, he he puts this bandage on his ear, and then the next thing you know, everybody in his crowd does those people are nuts. These cronies, uh, 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 they, yeah, the cronies had all, all yeah, bandits on their ear first. I was like, what in the world? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's how, that's how crazy. That's how crazy people. So so what Bill Woodward came out with, uh, you, you know, just, just recently, they don't care. It, 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 will, it will not matter to those people. All right, let me keep going. You guys all right? Hey, Sarasati. Yes. yes. Glad you could join us. Now, here in in this debate, she beat him down. She 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 showed you how you and, and you know what? He couldn't even face her. He couldn't even look her in the eye. She walked up on him and said, Hi, my name is Kamala. I hope you have a good debate. And then she just she just beat him down. She basically played him like a shoe too. She pulled his his strings. She she messed with him really bad. His head. She really did. She she, she did. did. And I enjoyed every minute of it. You know what? She's a, she's an expert prosecutor. She knows how. To, so so that they have these these different uh, uh, looks. That's right, fool. Dig that hole. That's that's what you're talking about, uh, uh, Sugar D. You know. And then number two, seriously. 
And then number three, what the? Number four, that's ridiculous. And then there's whatever nonsense that is, you know. Number five, no, seriously, what the F is wrong with you? Yeah. Number six, say what? Number seven, damn you, stupid. Number eight, I will end you. B, please. And number 10, just, just shut the F up. She, 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 she won just by on looks. The looks that she gave. And then, so. One top left looks like, oh, are you off your dimension meds? <laughs> which one? This, which one? Which one, Bill? This one? Bill, which one? Can't hear you, man. Yes, that one. Uh, top right. To, oh, yeah. Were. Yeah. Right here. Like, right here. She looks like, oh, it's so sad. Poor old guy can't keep his thoughts straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know what? Okay, he's not as stupid as I thought he was. He knows better than to get into another debate with her. <laughs> and then right after... Right after, this is what, so post the debate, you know, when, when Biden, uh, post uh, uh, June 27th, Joe Biden debate, it was 33 to 67 Trump. And then pre-Trump-Harris uh, 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 debate, it was 50-50. And when it, when, it, when it was over, this was the initial poll. 63 to 37. She she really beat him down. You know. And and he 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 threw this in. He was prepared to say this. They're eating dogs and cats and they're eating their pets, which is a lie. But it took everybody off from project 2025. Every time the the the, the subject of dogs and cats come up, you should just you should just say project 2025. <laughs> and, and then she, uh, I like this. I like this meme. What a, what happened to any time anywhere? Mm -hmm. You know. And then I found this thing: Hoteps for Harris. <laughs> Hoteps for Harris. These are truly phenomenal times with the high prospects of Kamala Harris winning her bid for president of the United States, we must really stay prayed up for her safety because there are crazies and a few nuts. There, there are YT crazies and a few black nuts as well who are filled with hate and they're not going down without a fight. As we say in New York, if you see or hear something, say something to the authorities. It should be it could be subtle, but call it in anyway. Don't give these haters a voice. Shut them down immediately. There's a big difference. And, and, and I think everybody on this uh, Zoom call realizes that there's a big difference from criticizing and questioning Kamala Harris statements that don't line up uh, and down, you know, than uh, than downright egregious posts and hates, block and report all suspicious activities. Somebody put this in. Hoteps for hair. And then now uh, there's a number of people uh, at we'll say, particularly we'll say Oakland, that are that that want this brother's book, Takar Kilimanjaro, Doctor Takar Kilimanjaro's book on my. Um, and and uh, those of us that are in the Kepper group, we're, we're reviewing that. But this is what he posted um, a couple of weeks ago. He says, don't tell people not to vote. Shows infantile stupidity. Tell them to show discretion with the few choices they have. 
then do 100 times more than vote in between elections. Really mm -hmm. stupid to tell someone to put a Trump okay. in office so he can stack the court with three more neo-Nazis along with the other three Nazi Republicans already put there now our folks are running around complaining about the $300 billion affirmative action ruling they lost. They're going to lose every time with the 66 to 3 neo-Nazi court. I thought I would put that in. So, update. The Biden-Harris administration has canceled nearly... $170 billion in student loan debt for 4.7 million Americans. And okay, these numbers have changed a little bit, I think for the better on the left. Four years ago, the Dow was at 19,000. Today, it closed at 41,000. Four years ago, unemployment was 9.2. Today, it's 4.2. Facts matter. And then, oh, you know what? I need to find this. I'm going to pause this here because I because uh, Doris sent me something, and and I need to play it. I I need to get it. It's on my phone. You guys talk talk amongst yourselves again, please. Um, all right. Thank you for putting those in the chat. You all just give me give me a couple of minutes. I'll be right back. just to report ahead of time it looks like milton is going a little south of us we're not entirely clear of the winds and rain but uh, we're not evacuating so where, where are you now in jacksonville okay okay mm. Can you guys hear me now? Does yeah. It sound any better? It's fine, John. Yeah. It does? Okay, good. That looks that sounds better, man. Uh, and that Bluetooth I had connected it. <laughs> I just want to say I like the way Kamala Harris is now beginning to separate herself from the Biden administration on the issues of immigration. And she made another statement. Uh, I don't know if it was rated related to student loans or what the other issue is, but I think that's the right strategy to separate herself slowly but surely from the past Biden administration and therefore establish her own footing. So that's what I'm beginning to hear in her campaign. And I, I think that's the right direction for her to go. I don't know if the rest of you are hearing that as well. I have an admission to make. I, when it comes to politics, I've never been one to really follow it very much. I've only been engaged since this time around. Me uh, too. And that, yeah, and that's mainly because back in the seventies, <clears throat> I read a book called "None Dare Call It Conspiracy," and it forever tainted me uh, regarding politics because it said a bunch of stuff. Uh, that came true. The book was written in the late fifties, so it it talked about the 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 wall in Berlin, the Berlin Wall, Berlin Wall that it was going to come down, and it did. And he talks about a bunch of other stuff, but he talked about how all these uh, stuff that happens in America and around the world. He made the claim that Khrushchev's uh, getting fired that came from Fifth Avenue, Fifth Avenue, Madison Avenue. That, that order came down from there. So just a bunch of stuff that was said. And like I said, it's been, that was in the 70s when I read this book. But like I said, it planted something here. And I've just been suspect in politics ever since. Don't trust me. Kamala, she's going to get in there. I'm going to vote for her. But whether she's going to do uh, what we all think she should do, well, time will tell, right? Time will tell. But bottom line, we don't want a maniac in the office. 
we got to remember she can't do anything without Congress passing yeah. it either. They, yeah. they, they'll, exactly. do, they'll jack her up exactly. quick. Exactly. Exactly. A lot of people, and like I said, I don't really follow politics, but I've been learning a lot this go round. And that's one of the things I found out. You know, the president ain't got, they, they keep saying the president is the most powerful, most powerful man on the planet. And no, 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 he's, he's just a figurehead more, more than anything, you know, to talk to talk. Yeah. Well, I've talked to a few white Trump voters. Don't necessarily like the man, a couple of them. And when faced with that, that he's a person you wouldn't want to raise your children to be like, one of the first things was that Trump was going, that uh, Kamala was going to tax your um, capital gains and, you know, report it to a House bill. So it's where people are getting their information because that is proposed, but it's over if you have over a hundred million dollars. And I don't really have that sitting around. Um, then they were talking about what people had said and done to Trump. And I asked, well, what about Trump now? Not whatever you think he did in the past, but what about this man that's talking and acting insane? What, what is about Kamala Harris? Huh? I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting things ready. Go, oh, go, keep okay. Talking. So I said, you know, what about him now? What if he is having some mental issues and not quite sane? Who is going to be running the country? And what do you know about them? And what do they want to uh -huh. do? And they that said other the evil. same thing about Kamala. I said, yeah, but I know who's behind Kamala. <laughs> That's a known entity. I don't like politics, but at least those are familiar people. These mm -hmm. folks with the Project 2025 and eating the cats and dogs and all the other misinformation they're out there and the distractions of whether or not Kamala is Black. Who cares whether or not... Mm -hmm. um, what was the other thing? Janet Jackson talking. Who cares? It's just to get us off the track. Yeah. So we don't talk about video. anything of substance. I was watching a video of Asa Hilliard, a 1995 video that he did. And he talked about Project 2025 in 95. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It, it, you know, the Heritage Foundation has been out there. Uh, for a while, and and well, the Heritage these Foundation. People, what he talked about? Excuse me, not twenty twenty five, but he mentioned the Heritage Foundation. That's what he did. Yeah. But, uh, getting back on this, uh, and thank you, uh, Celeste and and John. What has Kamala done? This is what we'll say. So w we're asked these questions. Biden Harris administration actions to advance equity an opportunity for black Americans, achieve lowest black unemployment rate on record, increase capital access to small businesses, helping result in the fastest growth in black business ownership in three decades, invested over 16 billion in historically black colleges, the most ever, pardon offenses for simple possession of marijuana under federal and uh, DC uh, code required stricter use of force standards for federal law enforcement as part of an executive order for accountable and effective policing, reduced barriers to home ownership and fought back against racial bias in the home appraisal process, appointed more black women as circuit court judges than all previous presidents combined, signed the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act into law, making lynching a federal hate crime for the first time in American history. And then uh, I found this, well, Doris sent this to me a few weeks ago, and I hope, I hope that you all can see it. And here it goes. Ever did for black people. Kamala Harris has undertaken several initiatives and actions 
that have aimed to benefit black Americans, both as a U.S. Senator and as Vice President. As a U.S. Senator, advocating for criminal justice reform. First Step Act. Harris supported the bipartisan First Step Act, which aimed to reform the criminal justice system, including reducing mandatory minimum sentences for nonviolent drug offenses, which disproportionately affect black communities. Anti-lynching legislation. Harris co-sponsored the Justice for Victims of Lynching Act, which aimed to make lynching a federal hate crime. Justice in Policing Act. Harris co-authored this comprehensive police reform bill, which includes measures to ban chokeholds, establish a national database of police misconduct, and end qualified immunity for law enforcement officers. Harris introduced the LIFT, Livable Incomes for Families Today, the Middle Class Act, which proposed a tax credit that would benefit low- and middle-income families, including many black families. Rent Relief Act. Harris introduced legislation aimed at providing rent relief to families spending more than 30% of their income on rent, benefiting many black Americans facing housing affordability issues. As vice president, Harris has supported and advocated for measures within the American Rescue Plan, which included significant funding for black owned businesses, expanded the child tax credit, and provided direct financial support to families disproportionately affected by the pandemic, including black Americans. Harris has championed the Black Maternal Health Momnibus Act, which addresses the black maternal health crisis through investments in social determinants of health, funding for community-based organizations, and improvements in data collection and research. Harris has been a vocal advocate for the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act and the For the People Act, aimed at protecting and expanding voting rights, particularly for communities of color. Harris has worked to secure increased funding for historically black colleges and universities, HBCUs, recognizing their critical role in providing education and opportunities for black students. These efforts reflect her ongoing commitment to addressing issues that disproportionately impact black Americans. She still ain't black. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, that's that's where we are. You know, that's a, that, that's 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 where we are. OK, just a, just a few more uh, slides and uh, we'll be. We'll be black. We'll be black. We'll be back. OK, hold on just a second. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Bill. That's good. That's a good thing to put in. All right. Oh, yeah, I made this rolling thing. You know, what has she done? Uh... <laughs> well, those are things I could find that she had done, you know, nationally. Can you pass those two slides along? You know, they're, um, I don't know how they're going. I, I can just, I can send you the PowerPoint, but it's, it's, it's almost like a gig. 
Um, let, let me let me see if I can uh, find that somehow. Um, that was Celeste that asked that question, or Darnisha. Celeste. Say again. Celeste. Okay, I'm sorry, Celeste. All right. So, and the sisters. This is kind of. Uh, I, I didn't plan this. You know the, the. You know we're coming into our next meeting as well. But but the sisters are taking their place. You know, all these people are pursuing. Just even even um, uh, Michelle Obama are pursuing justice against Trump. <laughs> Kamala Harris for president, decent, wise, <laughs> reflective, compassionate, educated, unifying, and entirely sane. That's one of the things when you see her compared to the other guy, she she just looks like somebody that's entirely sane. All right. M Hotel. Okay, we have about uh, a little little over fifteen minutes to. Uh, can I? I'm sorry. Say say that again, please. I say, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Yes, you may. Yes. Hey, we talk about. Kamala and what's happening with with <laughs> why haven't we talked about Trump and what's happening in Russia and how wherever he go now he expect people to stand up and applaud him as he walk in so what what would be the difference putting him in compared to Kamala with the uh, Israel as to him with the Russian <clears throat> You, you know, what I think, Mama, is that, okay, okay. see those, th this, this, it, this is my take on the Palestinian thing. Okay, Netanyahu, whose grandfather has a Polish last name, mm -hmm. you know, they came in, he's been giving money to Hamas all along to divide them from, so to divide Hamas from the Palestinian, Palestinian Liberation Organization. Remember that PLO? You don't even hear no. about PLO. No. I don't, I don't even mention that. And so he moves the army away from this place where these people are attacked, does something to provoke Hamas because Netanyahu is not liked in Israel, and he they're trying to take him out of Israel. And so... I understand all of that. I just was saying, mm -hmm. uh, why, why are we not discussing the danger of even Trump dealing with Russia? Because we would, we would really be in, in, in great danger because he's he going to sell us all out. Yeah, I, and I think that's what's coming out now with the Bill Woodward uh, stories because um, Trump stole all those documents, took them back to his pad at Mar-a-Lago. You know, he's, he's, he's having, you know, there's something called the Logan Act that you're supposed to, uh, there's, there's, you're supposed to notify intelligence agencies that you that you're talking to people like Putin and, and foreign actors. And and you know what Trump knows about that because he accused John Kerry of the same thing, uh talking talking to other uh, uh foreign nationals. So you're right. We should be talking about that. Uh it it's it's for us personally it will affect us more than what's going on in Palestine. But I think what's I think the Palestinian issue, you see, you see the bombings, you see how how people's uh, uh, dwellings are, are reduced to rubble all over, and, and and so that's that's in the minds of people. Oh but yeah, now I'm maybe not, it hurts to, for us to watch this every day. I'm just, I just was listening last night as to how 
Trump have already established in his mind that even today they say when he walk on the golf course, everybody have to stand and applaud to him like he's in Russia. And I'm just saying, if he talk about third world country, but he's the one going to make this place a third world country. And that that yeah, because and we need to we need to start thinking ahead. And and so many people are putting Kamala down, but instead of putting her down like that, we should be lifting her up, and and criticizing more of what Trump is doing than what we doing right now. Because everybody think, oh, he's just crazy, let it go. No, it's more to it than that. I'm sorry, I I uh I I, I no, just you're, you're... Don't like what's happening. I, I I agree with you. And you know, I just saw James Carville on, and he was on uh, Ari Melber, and James Carville was the campaign uh, the director for uh, Clinton, and he said every time a lie is put, to, he said he said they should address it in real time. You you know, every time they say you know something crazy like. You know, they're holding FEMA money or they're eating cats and dogs. Or they, you know, that you should address it right then. Right. Don't, don't let it go because they, they, and he used this example. He said, because a lie can travel around the world twice before truth gets its shoes on. That's, you know, that's, so. That's a true fact. They always yeah. say when, when you go out to eat, if you get a bad meal, a hundred people will know it. When you get a good one, only one will hear about it. The same. That's thing. right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, but thank you anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mom. I, I hope I answered your question. I, tr yeah. I tried. You know, I, I sit here and I listen to a lot of things and read a lot of things. And I just, mm -hmm. I just hate to see this place that this man get in on lies. And if he get in, it's simply because of lies. And you know we, what? You know what? You know what he's going to get in? You know what he's going to get in on if he does? I'm telling is the you. Electoral, is the Electoral College. Exactly. Which, which, they, which they need to abolish. It, <laughs> it, it shouldn't be. You, you shouldn't win by three million votes and lose the election. You, you, you know, you, that, that, that is not. That is not Mott. That is not justice. That is not democracy. And, and if we teach our kids today not to lie, and the kids are, are dealing with this in school and what have you. I mean, what's the sense? We we telling them yeah. it's, okay. it's okay to lie and get away with it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That that is that I'm, is right. And I'm just an old country woman. That's all. <laughs> I'm just a I'm just a, a ghetto child uh, raised by old country people. So uh, I'm I'm the same way. So. Were you going to say something, Sebastian? I, I saw you come off mute for. Yes, I was just. And if if we are, <clears throat> if if everything goes in 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 favor of Kamala being elected, we must not all of a sudden think that there's going to be immediate and drastic changes. Um. Yeah. Obama got the door open. I mean, it's all it's almost like <clears throat> and you, you know, you can look at a big ocean liner, and, and one thing, if you've ever known anything about boats, anything on water, they don't have brakes. <laughs> mm. This system has been running in the direction by certain groups of people forever. Ever, ever since, yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, for those of us that have a house. Outsiders can't come into our house and just start changing things. This is that's our house, <laughs> you know, and they're not going to allow things to just change all of a sudden. That ocean liner, when it decides that it's going to make some sort of a a turn, I don't care if it's a a, a, a five degree move or it can be a 30 degree turn. That decision is made well in advance it takes a a while for that i mean you you 
You know, they start thinking about that in Sacramento before they make that bend in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, That's so it, it's the process of what we're looking for. What, sorry, the thought of what we're looking for is a process. When Obama got in, there were more women, people of color that started running for office in their localities and then coming into Congress than ever before. And that's on the Democratic side. It's a process. You know, um, yeah. the, 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 one of the most powerful pictures I've ever seen when he got in office was this little kid about four or oh, five or six years old. And and I mean, it, 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 it brought me to tears when he bent down and let that kid touch his hair. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So now, now you're looking at a five year old kid that's probably in his mind, like, wow, I'm hearing my parents around the house just so excited about this guy. And he's the one of the most powerful people around. And man, his hair is just like mine. Mm -hmm. And the night mm -hmm. that Obama gave his inauguration speech in Chicago, you had Carl Rove speaking with the Koch brothers and many like that, saying that starting tonight, this, this Negro right here will not get a second term. But it happened. Yeah. So now you've got a five-year-old kid, four years, impressionable years. He's looking at this man with hair like mine. Now that kid goes from age nine <laughs> to 13 and the impact that it has no no more different than when you mention the convention and we see the hair the back of Kamala's niece's head and yeah. what it's doing to what it's doing to females and black females right now and how the sisters are coming out locking arms behind this sister there's a change that's coming, and they are scared as all get out. But it's a process. So, you know. Yeah, be, yeah. <laughs> I'd just like to comment, Spencer. Um, the ascension of a Kamala Harris as president is a significant change for this country. We are in the process of going to a matriarchal leadership phenomena, yeah. not yeah. only among uh, black women who are being a, who are really aggressive and supporting Kamala, but the, that whole process now is going to grow a whole leadership of black females who will ascend, as well as the potential is that we will have for the next, our lifetime, candidates who are females from both the Democratic and Republican Party who uh, will be the major contestants. And I, I don't think people thought much about what that means in terms of our national leadership with matriarchal leaders over the next 20 years. I see that as a, as a change which we need to think about and talk about and measure the value it has for the future of us as African Americans are Americans of African descent in this country. You know what, Jerry, every time you open your mouth, it's just so wise. Um, thank you for that. That's that's what I that's what I believe. I believe that that's happening slowly but surely. Well, partly that's based upon you mentioned 1970 or 72. In 1972, uh -huh. I'd been in California for a couple of years and served as a delegate from California to the National Democratic Convention for then wow. the matriarchal wow. leader, Shirley Chisholm. Shirley Chisholm, yeah. yeah. Takes back. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and you. Having a matriarchal society is nothing new for us as an African people. That's right, yes. You know, yeah, and, 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 and for the world. Let me tell you, uh, there's a book, it's called uh, The Encyclopedias of the Women's Myths and Secrets. And it goes from A to Z. And um, in that book, words, uh, and, and I'm not using this as a 
bad word, but words like bitch and harem, those bitch was a goddess mm. in, in, in Europe. Um, harem was a female priestess hood. You know, so um, things have been turned around. Uh, now this, uh, uh, I'm, I'm cautioning you, this is what, uh, this is the way I would talk to my sons. I would tell my sons, okay, this is what dad thinks. Your mother thinks this way, but this is, this is dad's op op opinion uh, uh, about a thing. So in history, I'm familiar with this information that the statue that we call the Sphinx before it was Hor M. Aket, it was Tef Nudi. It was a it was a feminine statue. So it's happened before. There's 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 matriarchal and then there's matrilineal. So in many in many African societies, the lineage is traced through the woman. Mm -hmm. It makes the most sense because the only the woman knows if it's hers. <laughs> uh -oh, okay, that's that's just it. That's that's just science. I know that's heavy. I know that blew everybody's mind. You never never uh, had considered that before. But but you know it was matrilineal society. So uh, Kemet, uh, you, you know Nigerian, um, Akan, uh, all all throughout Africa. There 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 are a few uh, societies that that were patrilineal, but most, by and large, most of them were were matrilineal. And and at one time, you see, in Arabia, the people that were there, they were black people. They were called the Sabians, and and. Before there was Allah, there was Allah, and she was part of a female trinity, which included Kor, and I can't think of the other one. And if you read uh, Sheikh Anta Job's book, African Origin of Civilization, Myth or Reality, he shows how they were already making the pilgrimage to Mecca a thousand years before Muhammad was born. They were already going there. And, 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 and if you look, I, sh I showed this uh, one night at the SOS meeting. If you look at the Kaaba stone and you look at female genitalia, it looks, it looks remarkably similar. Mm -hmm. So what, what were they doing uh, initially? They were going down bowing down to the feminine aspect of creation. All right, it's 628, and uh, women of Wose are, are about to have their meeting. And um, uh, I, I hope, you know, all of this was unplanned. Uh, you know, I was, I, was gonna, I was gonna talk about something else, but, um, you know, the prevailing thought was to go in this direction. And uh, let's see, what the bill just put in, he said, yes, that's the problem is that attitude. Shirley Chisholm's unbossed, unbought. Barbara Lee is refusing to authorize Shrub's war. You, mm -hmm. you know, and it just goes on. Great, uh, great things to put in there, Bill. Yeah. Celeste, you're right. We have to start working on, uh, uh, on abolishing or replacing the Electoral College. You, you know, actually, um, uh, Waltz mentioned that in one of his speeches, and but but he had to walk it back. You know, he he he, he spoke too soon. All right, uh, what brothers, we have to. What was the name of the book? Say again. Encyclopedia. What? What was the name of the right. book? It's a, it's called the Encyclopedias of the Women's Myths and Secrets by Barbara right. Walker. Barbara Walker. Of the women's and myths it, and secrets. Yes. Uh huh. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, so, brothers, we have to leave. Uh, women uh, of Wose are going to have their uh, 
meeting now. Uh, I'm glad that you all could join us. Thank you for your uh, input and, and contributions. It's always welcome.